to be? Do you believe this will lead to a decrease in the number of Ukrainians fleeing the war and coming to Ireland, whether it's initially or whether it's secondary movement? Yeah, so I think most people want, first of all, to be able to be generous and to provide um, a safe harbour for people coming from the war in Ukraine. But I think also people want the process to be sustainable. So compassion and common sense as well. And I think there's no doubt in everybody's minds at this stage that the fact that we had higher welfare rates, that that was a draw uh, in terms of uh, more people coming to this country. And it is definitely the objective of this government now to reduce those rates, to reduce the numbers coming to Ireland. But the big question is, there's only about... Uh, 1,800 houses, for example, on daft.ie for rent at, at the moment. Um, and, you know, it's, it's going to be very, very difficult, near, if not impossible, to uh, accommodate the numbers uh, if they are a repeat of last year uh, coming to Ireland. So, but, we're not, but we're not going to see that as the expectation because yeah. the draw, the pull, the government is saying isn't going to be there anymore. So, so I think what you, you, you say, stated yourself, so Leo Varadkar has stated that 5,000 people have, uh, are in direct provision at the moment who are entitled to work and to live uh, in society, uh, but they can't because they're, they have nowhere to go. So that is going to be the case uh, with Ukrainians again in the new year, but the, the sole purpose is just to reduce the numbers uh, that are coming. And do you welcome that? Well, I, I think the government had no choice, and it is something that we have called for for uh, a number of months, that there is an equalisation of welfare rates uh, between Ireland and your, the other European countries, because the sustainability issue has has gone. You know, the, the manageability. I just, I just wondering when you, because I've, I've seen you use the word sustainable a lot when it comes to immigration. What do you mean by sustainable? Well, what does sustainability s- sustainable is in very, immigration actually look like? It's very simple. It is equalisation of resource and numbers coming to Ireland. So numbers, you, you want to be able to help people, but you need resources to be able to help people. And if you don't have enough resources, you obviously can't sustain the same number of people coming to the country uh, on an annual basis. So, so you know, do you think this goes far enough or do you think the government needs to go well, further than this? I think the government have, are, are, if you look at the whole asylum process in Ireland, the government are making incredible mistakes. So the lack of, first of all, uh, consultation with local communities is, is causing great difficulties nearly in every county in the country at the moment. The lack of funding to communities who are, who are hosting uh, people. You know, the government announced 50 million euros last year uh, to help communities who are supporting. Only 2 million of that has ever been spent, which is an incredible situation. Also, if you look, there's thousands of people currently in the asylum process in the state that are there for two, three and four years. There's one person there for 14 years in just for the first asylum application in the state, which is an incredible length of time to, first of all, make people wait for asylum. But also it means that the state has to accommodate people many of whom aren't asylum seekers Okay, as and well. you, you do mention that, that single individual. I've seen you mention that mm. person in, in the Doyle. But the Irish Refugee Council said for last year, the, the median wait, the average wait for a process and for a decision was 18 months. So they, they are processing applications. They, they are. But, but again, for example, if you look at the deportations, so from 2018 to 2022, 5,000 people received deportations off, off the state. And the state only enforced those in 550 cases. <clears throat> so the, in the vast majority of cases, the government are not even enforcing the deportations that they're giving. So what I'm saying is we do well, I think need... they've said they're actually unsure because some people may have deported, may have left exactly. the country voluntarily <laughs> and haven't notified so that's the government. Not, that's not a managed situation when the government doesn't even know where okay. the people are.